Hi there, welcome again to a little bit of Lisp, and this time uh, we're going to be looking at something we might have been taking for granted for a while. So in the evaluation um, model episode that I did, we were talking about what happens when uh, code evaluates. And a lot of things evaluate to themselves, like numbers or like strings, uh, but there were things like symbols, which have special rules for what happens when they evaluate. When you evaluate this, um, what it's going to go and do is it's going to go and look up for a variable that's named by the symbol foo and return the value that's bound to it, which basically means get the variable foo. And there is no foo to find, so it's going to complain. That's fine. Um, if we didn't want this behavior, we put this little quote symbol in front of it. And that said, don't evaluate this, just return it as data, just return the object. So here we have the symbol foo. Um, and we can see that it's a symbol if we use type of the last thing that was evaluated, we see symbol. Cool. Um, and the same was true for lists. We have special rules. So if we write one, two, three, it's not going to just return a list. Lists have special evaluation rules when used like this as code. Um, so what happens is it's going to look in the first uh, element. It's going to find a symbol. It's going to look up the function that is named by the symbol plus. And then it is going to evaluate these forms, which are all numbers, so they'll evaluate to themselves, and pass those values to the function plus. Right? Um, and that gives us six. But if, again, we can put a quote in front and we're going to say, hey, don't evaluate this. Just return it as data to me. Give me um, a list with where the first thing in the list is a symbol plus and the, the next three things are the numbers, one, two, and three. Um, that's cool, but it's kind of weird, right? There's, there's, we have this language, this Lispio language that's all about this prefix notation. Look at the first thing in the list and it's all based on that. And then we get this weird thing that's just hanging around outside of a list, which apparently has meaning. What is this? Well, it's actually a piece of syntactic sugar. Um, and it just makes a certain thing nicer to write. This is defined, uh, this is part of the reader syntax of Lisp. And so what it's equivalent to is quote, one, two, three. You see, we get exactly the same thing back. Quote means don't evaluate this. And this goes for foo, just like above. It goes for, yeah, just like any, any form that you can imagine we put in there um, is just not going to be evaluated. But imagine it like if we had to write quote all the time. Um, in this kind of way, it adds a lot of visual noise to our code. And because this is something we do so often, we don't want that clutter. And so there is a special piece of syntax to find called quote that we stick before a thing. And this is exactly the same as this. And we can actually um, do a little messing around to see that that's true. Let's say, how are we going to do this? Let's say we make a list which is quoted, and inside we quote A, right? This is weird, and the next bit's going to be weird as well. So we've got this, and then we say, what's the first thing in there? It's quote A. What's the first thing in that? Quote. See, it's literally this is actually identically this in the source code. This expands, we would say, into this. Um, we just don't see it very clearly in this code. And that's the point of that sugar. And when you write, um, when you say don't evaluate quote A, it will even do this. It will even quote it for you. So it's, it is, uh, it will always try to use that syntactic sugar and make things look clean. But you just should know that this is what's going on behind the scenes. This is what we would otherwise have to write. And this applies in another case as well. Like when we did this before, say we have um, this hash quote. This means go and return the function named print, right? It's not just print. If we evaluate that, it's going to go look for a variable called print. Um, no, we wanted a special case. We want to go and look up the function that's named print. And here it is. Here it, it's right there. But what is this? What is this weird bit of syntax equivalent to? It's equivalent to function print. And again, function and quote, as we can see, are not following the normal rules of evaluation, which makes them special forms. And so that's really all I wanted to cover um, in this episode. It's really just kind of awareness thing. You don't have to think about this when you're normally coding, um, but it's to be aware that this language is actually consistent. Even the bits that look kind of magical in special case are made of the same stuff. And it's that kind of consistency that actually makes this fun to work with and fun to reason about. It's just, you know, just a nice time. 
So, until next time, I will sign off. And uh, yeah, let's think of what we can do in the next video.